Hey guys, so today we'll take a look at a premium 65% keyboard, the Geek GK68. This version comes with an aluminum case, PVD die sublimated keycaps, hot swappable switches, RGB LEDs, and much more. So let's check it out. The keyboard comes in a black box, compared to the cheaper Geek keyboards which generally come in brown boxes. In it you get a carrying case made out of a felt material, pretty nice that they include that. The keyboard is in the case, you also get a braided Type-C cable, a keycap puller, and a key switch puller. Taking a look at the keyboard, it has an all aluminum body that looks like a spaceship, and it's quite heavy. The color is not exactly space gray, but not silver either. At the back there is a Type-C connector, but it's at the right, compared to most compact boards that have the connector at the left. Just by that difference, we can guess that the keyboard won't be compatible with many other cases. And at the bottom you get two removable feet, although you lose the rubber pads if you unscrew them. The keycaps that come with the board are really nice. They're PBD and they have die sublimated legends, so they should last a long time. The theme looks great too, with red and grey accents, I think it looks really great. However, you don't get replacement keycaps for the red keys if you happen to really dislike them. Their profile is DSA, so each row has the same shape, apart from the F and J keys which have a slightly deeper dish. Overall, this profile looks really good, but to me, it's not as easy to type on, mainly because it's harder to know which row your fingers are located at. Still, super nice key set, the plastic is thick, and the legends look really nice. The layout is also not 100% NC standard, although it's pretty close. It's almost the same as the Tata 68 or the Echo 3068, the only difference being that the tilde and backspace keys are swapped. I'm not a fan of that choice, as the backspace key is shifted one unit to the right, and it's super easy to miss at first. Basically, no keyboard has its backspace key there, so it's quite hard to get used to. The other main differences are the one unit keys at the bottom right, and the right shift key is one unit shorter to accommodate the up arrow key. Overall, a great layout apart from the backspace key to me. You do get dedicated arrow keys in a small form factor though, and that's great. The pre-install switches are from Gateron, and my unit came with brown, so great switches overall. But what's especially great is the fact that they're hot swappable, so you can replace a switch if it breaks, or simply try out new switches without buying a new keyboard. And that's always nice to have that feature. The stabilizers are also pretty good, they come pre-lubricated, so that helps, but even then, they don't rattle and they go down straight. Having a nice aluminum case and a metal plate under also helps with the sound, but I'll have a sound test so you can actually make up your mind. Like all other GK keyboards, you can customize a lot on this keyboard using the GK6X Plus driver. With it, you can configure up to three profiles stored on board, and each of these profiles can have three layers of key remappings and lighting configurations. Being a 65% keyboard, I feel like having multiple layers is not as necessary as regular 60% boards, since you have dedicated arrow keys and a few navigation keys too. But it's still nice to have that room for customization and you're still missing a bunch of keys compared to a full size board anyway. The software also lets you record macros and custom light animations if the default ones aren't enough for you. It's not the easiest thing to use in the world but it gets the job done and lets you customize the board quite in depth. Speaking about those lights, they actually look really good, they shine bright and are really vibrant, even more than the other GK boards I've tried I think, but maybe the metal plate's color helps too. One thing that's special is that the board has four LEDs on each side, which aren't really visible with the current case, but they could be with something like an acrylic case. I'd like to see the reason behind that implementation though. And finally, the keyboard also has a mic, so you can have a reactive mode where the LEDs will shine based on the room's audio. So before ending this video, let's go through the pros and cons, starting with what I don't like. First, the price. It's quite expensive at $140, and I understand that everything's premium in this board, from hot swappable switch sockets to high quality PBD die sub keycaps to the solid aluminum case. I don't think it's overpriced, but it would be nice to see a cheaper implementation as well. 
On the other hand, you could compare this keyboard to the MassDrop Alt keyboard as it shares most of the features, although the Alt is QMK compatible, looks a bit better in my opinion, and has an LED strip in the case. It does sell for $40 more though. Another thing I don't like is the placement of the backspace key. I think it should be like the Echo 3068 and follow the NC standard as close as possible, and this would make switching from and to this keyboard much easier. Finally, I've noticed that I had to unplug and replug the board to wake my PC from sleep. It didn't seem to register keys otherwise. Kind of a bummer as I tend to put my PC to sleep instead of shutting it down, and I didn't experience that issue with other GK61 or 64 keyboards. Finally, with a USB port at the right, it won't be compatible with many third-party cases, although if you're paying extra for that aluminum case, you probably don't plan on replacing it anyway. Now to the stuff I like, the build quality is really good and the materials are great, the keycaps are thick, high quality and use great production processes. They do impose a team with those red accent keys, but as long as you like them, it shouldn't be a problem. Then the typing experience is really good and the included stabilizers are great and prelude. It uses USB Type-C, which is always great to see. The LEDs look amazing, they're bright and super vibrant. And finally, it's highly customizable, so you can really have it your way. Now, should you buy this exact keyboard? The main thing refraining me right now is the price, because you do have a lot of options with a budget of $140. If you like the keycaps, case and layout, I'd say it's a great buy. Otherwise, I'd recommend the Echo 3068, another 65% keyboard that sells for much lower. You do lose the customization, the LEDs, the aluminum case, and the hot swappable switches. However, the typing experience is as good if not better. The backspace key has better location in my opinion, and you also get Bluetooth connectivity. Finally, you still get great PVD die sub keycaps, this time with the Cherry profile, and you also get a USB Type-C port. So this is it for today's video. Let me know down below what you think about this keyboard. I will also review the Aluminum Geek GK64 pretty soon, so stay tuned for that. And if you happen to find keyboards that I should review, feel free to let me know as well. Although I do have a pile waiting for me to review already. Anyway, affiliate links will be in the description for you to check it out and help the channel at the same time. So thank you for watching, make sure you like the video if you did and if you didn't, just let me know why in the comments below. Otherwise, don't forget to subscribe if you still haven't already, as I'll see you in the next video.